loves to work hard and play hard. Lake Point, this spectacular complex in Emerson, Georgia. My name is Darren Sutton on behalf of Perfect Game, representing amazing, talented 32 high school baseball teams and athletes like this one. Ryan Bliss, shortstop, Troop County High School. Let's take a walk to the down deck circle and you can introduce me to this event. Are you having fun? I'm having fun. This, uh, this tournament is amazing, you know. Uh, how Perfect Game got this tournament together and uh, get everybody in the same area for great competition, it's, it's really fun. So it's got a great history. You have 89 players drafted out of this event. Mm -hmm. 800 college commits. In this event alone, six PG All-Americans, you were knocking on the door of being one of those. So for you, the college commitment part is where I really look when you think about high school mm -hmm. baseball. Where are you going and why? I'm going to Auburn University. You know, uh, Coach Bush Thompson uh, has a great program going right now, and uh, the staff and everything about Auburn just felt home, and I just felt like that was a great choice for me. So this isn't travel ball, mm -hmm. this is high school ball. That's what's cool about it. You guys are at dances together, you guys are hanging out on the weekends uh -huh. together, your families know one another. That's a little bit different, but you also have to balance the books and the baseball. You're a 4.1, mm -hmm. your class president. How do you do that? Uh, you know, just try to get your head on the books first, you know. Make sure you get all your work done, all your homework, your t get up on your tests, and um, if you get that done, you don't have to worry about um, home, um, baseball and everything will be good. Everything will be good. We'll let you start. You play shortstop. Mm -hmm. You're an expert on all of these great players you're dealing with. Where should we start this show? <sighs> Let's start with Nanner DeSantis. You know, I play with him at Junior National. He's a great student of the uh, game, great shortstop. Uh, me and him became really good friends, and he's really good at the game. That's where we'll start, okay? Yes, sir. All right, Nander, here we go. Your comfort zone, yet your comfort zone is in Panama. That's yes, your sir. home. It is. Huge decision a couple of years ago for you to make to leave Panama mm -hmm. to come to the United States. I'd love to know how you come to that realization. It was, you know, it was a decision me and my family made. Um, you know, any other kid, you know, young age, 16, or, you know, being a free agent, wanted to sign on July 2nd. It was, you know, a dream was when I was, you know, 12 years old. I mean, then, you know, me and my family got into talks about it and how it's going to benefit me. You know, we really wanted to be, like, my family, so my, my parents were, like, school first type of parents. So we talked about it, and then I, you know, I heard a lot about, you know, the draft and all about, like, how beneficial it is to go to the U.S. and, you know, get an education and, you know, play the game at the same time. I thought it was awesome. You know, I'm thankful for it. I'm, you know, I'm definitely not taking it for granted. Hello, play partner. Hey, go here, here, easy. Here you go. Just getting warm up before the game. Big tournament coming up. No, working really hard. Can you visually see yourself in a major league stadium? Can you ever, do you do you ever have that dream? Can you see yourself playing in the major leagues? You know, it's, it sounds crazy right now. It's, it's today I had a dream that I was playing in the big leagues. And you know, it's crazy. And then just to see myself in the major league field, and you know, I had the chance with perfect game to go to San Diego and play the position over there. It doesn't get any better than that. Doesn't get any better than that. Being there, just standing out there at shore, you look up, you look around, you're like, you know, I'm, just, you know, I'm right here when a lot of bunch of players play here. You know, big time. You know, a lot of talented shorts will play here. Addison Russell and Dora will play here, and you know, see yourself there, which is great. I mean, I, you know, I'm mean, working really hard to hopefully accomplish that. Give me some keys that you would get me loosened up and some things with hands and feet and head, things that are important for a shortstop. Teach me. All right, basically, if you want to be a shortstop, you have to be able to move. You have to be have good, feet, good footwork, big time. Footwork has to be your priority. So basically what I like to do is, you know, before practice, before the game, get my feet working, you know, get little ground balls and try, you know, get around the ball and, you know, get my footwork working. You know, if you want to play and you want to stay there at short, you have to have good footwork and you have to be able to, you know, move lateral movements and, you know, get get your feet going. Your good first steps means those plays are really hard plays, diving plays, 
all, it all depends on how good you do your first step. And then you stay, we set the ball on the left side of your body. Stay on the left side of your body, because any bad hop, you're going to be able to get it on your chest and it's going to finish on the right in front. If you catch it by here, then the ball is going to go that way. You're going to be able to back it up. So you go, you catch it on your left side, so the ball is a bad hop, the ball is right there. You got time, you can pick it up, got it in first. I like, really like to get behind the ball. I try to get there as fast as possible, so I can get behind the ball. Get behind, again, I have my momentum to go to first, so my truck can carry, carry a little bit more. I can make it over there. So just a little bit over there, so you go one, two. You go behind the ball. You go over there, so your momentum takes you, so it's easier for you to throw the first. Back behind the back. Yeah, behind the back is basically momentum. So you go, you hear the sound, you go the same one, two, and then you react that way. Try to be, have a rhythm. When you're short, you have to have a rhythm. You have to be, you time your own pitcher, you know, you time your, your pre-pitch preparation, you time it, so you can get ready to get the ball. So you go, one, two, you react, you get behind it, and you set your body looking that way. So. You kind of go on the semicircle, so you can get your body behind it. You can make a good throw, make the play happen. So, you know, defense is something I take really, I'm really proud of my, my defense. I'm, I take it 100% serious, just like hitting, but, you know, defense is something you have to work every single day, no matter what happens. What did you hope to do when you got up there, and then what happened? Well, I saw since the beginning, I was waiting for the walk up here. I stayed with the approach. I lose my mind a little bit in the curve. Everybody starts screaming, but you know, you gotta stay focused in the game. And as my coach told me, stay with the approach, middle of the way, and I just did. All those times you show up on time for class, all those times you get up early and work out, it's for those moments right there. Exactly. Isn't it? What does a moment like that feel like for many of us who haven't had a hit like that? I told you I got it. I told you I got it. Good job. Good job. Hey. Hey. Let's tie it up. Vente, vente. Let's go. It's a moment that you can even describe. You just feel that emotion inside your body that you get you happy. What it's like to be on this high school team with these guys. In this high school team, it's just like family. You know everybody, you know their weaknesses and the strengths and we are all together. So if we win, we all win. If I win, we all win. Love when Shannon Ford is here, Major League Baseball's voice of the Play Ball Initiative. Great stuff, young players, and also in 2018, one of the voices of the Cincinnati Reds. But you're here watching a guy that may be a future Cincinnati Red and Andrew DeSatis. The energy around that program, the interesting way in which they all came together, the diversity, it's a fun group, isn't it? It is a fun group to watch. Mono Verde is a team with a lot of spirit. And as you mentioned, Nander DeSatis, he's a guy who's a leader. And that's exactly what you want out of a top draft prospect. So in a very different realm, yet the same position out here at short is Cade Dowdy. But it's much bigger than Cade of Denham Springs, the LSU commit. It's Denham Springs. We were here a year ago with them as they were building their way through through the flood damage and rebuilding their community. There's such depth with those young men. There is such depth with those young men and Cade Dowdy is one of those who is the whole package. As you mentioned, he's an athlete on the field. We saw some of his tools yesterday, but he's also a really good kid and somebody that we're going to want to watch. Family matters for Cade, certainly. We'll get into that discussion with him. We're going into the batter's box right now. Shannon's hanging with us for the rest of the show. All 
right here we go. Jackets on three, hit it, run. One, two, three. Jackets, hot, get on that field. What you saw over the last calendar year since you were here last March. Ooh, just everybody understanding all the stuff everybody went through and just the, the willingness to help each other. I mean, it's just, it's phenomenal. And when you sit back and you think about how much our kids learned and what they accomplished last year, we went to state quarterfinals, you know, in our, in 5A, and knowing all the stuff they've gone through all fall and, and to achieve that, it's just incredible what they achieved. So it's, you know, and, and they learn that. They learn a ton of, ton of life lessons. I, I really don't think they'll understand them until they get older, you know, and then they'll, and then when they have another situation come up, they'll know how to handle it. Probably the biggest thing I've taken out of it is, you know, you can't take anything for granted because, I mean, we didn't expect a flood. We weren't in a flood zone at all, but, you know, stuff happens. You just got to build off it. It kind of, you know, opened my eyes a little bit to, like, thank, be thankful for everything that I have and everything that we still have. Everybody's very involved in the school. Everybody's very involved in the churches. And, uh, I mean, it's just a uh, community-based school. It's just, you know, everybody knows what's going on, and they really support all the athletics and all the other programs that are going on there. And like I said, it's, uh, it's just a good place to raise your family. Tell us everything you want to tell us about Cade. Tremendous athlete. Um, I, I feel he's the kind of guy I could put him anywhere on the ball field, and he would be very, very good. Uh, with his team USA, he's played in the outfield, he's played corner infield for us, he's played you know, shortstop and pitch, clocked him in 91, I think, last week. So, uh, tremendously talented kid, works really hard, and uh, you know, he's got an unbelievable future ahead of him. My goodness, you've had an incredible USA baseball experience. Uh, traveling the world, the high level of baseball, what's that been like? I mean, it's awesome. Just, you know, seeing the USA on your on your chest is just a whole different feeling. And, you know, just playing for not just ourselves, but like for the whole community and the whole nation is just an amazing experience. Give me one snapshot memory of your trip this year. We beat Japan. Japan was 6-0. We were 5-1. and one. And we ended up in a three-way tie between Cuba, Japan, and America. We, we got left out of the gold medal game, but uh, we came into Japan, beat them 2-1. Four to one, something like that. Best game of my life. Best game of your life, yes, sir. Amazing. This is an interesting summer for elite players because you'll have that same USA baseball yes, experience, and you will also have the showcase experience. Yes, you'll have a chance to go to PG National at Tropicana Field, and then the All American Classic, which yes, is sir. the national TV dream come true. What do you hope happens? Obviously, the goal is to make PG All American. If you watch one of their games, there's so many like amazing phenomenal players that go there and like obviously the success that goes there is insane and you know it'd be an honor and like the best probably one of the best the best showcase ever gone to what's the jc on your head last year joey shoots he uh he was a part of the team kind of he was the concession stand worker football coach part of the community you know great guy he uh passed away i think a week before our first playoff game and um we actually went to the wake before our uh quarterfinal game and uh, I actually, uh, first at bat, I hit a home run. So it's just, this Joey shoots, you know. Great guy. Wish he could be here right now, but, you know. Have... It's a perfect way to end this. We'll end this by honoring yes, him. Yes, sir. Have a great year, my friend. Thank you. Take care. I used Rollins first base mitt, called it the Josie mitt. You know, I've always been a Rollins guy since I'm younger. I think I played catch about six or seven times in one day, try to break it in. If I bring it to school with me in class, I really do sleep with it. Just with the baseball, just go, hit it all day, stay all day over there, stay all day. You keep doing it, keep doing it until you start feeling it, and then just take it to the field right away. Um, I love this thing, it's a beaut. Uh, I break it in with a little uh, flair to it. In the form like this, for me, is I have to break my glove in to get it where I want it to be. I broke it in just like catching every day, keeping a ball in it. No, I broke it in by catching a bunch of pigs and just catching a bunch of balls with it. Uh, a lot of people put it in the microwave. It took me probably about six months to break this glove in. And of course, my country is 
Don't forget it, it's right there. It's a gamer, it never loses my sight wherever I go. Don't, I don't like to put it in my bag because I don't want it to get messed up, I just carry it around with me. When I carry it, I always carry it, don't want to put it in my bag, I don't want to smush it or anything. It's kind of a rare type of glove, limited edition, and I love the webbing on it. I like Evan Longoria style. I use the Rollins Pro Preferred 11 and a half inch. It's 11 and a half inch. I got a Rollins Pro Preferred 11 and three quarter inches, and uh, I got it for Christmas, but really one of my favorite gloves that I've had so far. Uh, I got my glove up in Lake Worth. The Rawlings, it came custom saying Goldie. No errors or anything with it, so kind of happy about that. I'm not complaining. What do you think about when you finish this high school season? You want to win all the games you can win. Then, when you go on to find out about the draft, or we'll go on to college, how do, you, how do you put that all together? It's always God first. Um, just getting closer to Him, getting to know Him better each and every day. And, uh, and then just my family too. Uh, my family is the most important thing to me. So there's never a time where you think of in the first round out of Cartersville, Georgia, the blank select. Oh, I've, I mean, absolutely, I think about that, but I mean, if, if it happens, it happens. I mean, I'm kind of in a win-win situation. I get to go to Florida, I mean, if I don't get drafted. Baseball's eventually gonna go away, and my family and God is never gonna go away in my life. From an early age, um, when he started walking, um, I could tell he had really good hands. He'd, if a ball was laying to his left side, he'd pick it up with his left hand, throw it back to me, right side, pick it up with his right hand, throw it back to him, or throw it back to me. He literally would alternate days growing up, you know, um, left-handed one day, righty the next day, lefty the next day. So he, he grew up kind of like, you know, breathing. It was just a part of him and what he did. There was a kid that was pitching and then he told, his, told the coach that his arm was hurting. And now just like, to me, it's like, I thought everybody threw with both arms. So, I mean, I just like told him, hey, just use your other arm. So, I mean. He plays basketball lefty, writes righty. Um, so, throws a football lefty, you know. So, it's always been something that, again, has been, has been real natural to him. You mentioned that one of your daughters plays baseball. Yes, ma'am. Sydney, she loves baseball. Matter of fact, I told her last night, I saw a gentleman that reminded me, said, um, he said, hey, does your daughter still want to come uh, be on our travel softball team? So I get home and she's at the table eating dinner. I go, Sydney, Sydney. I said, um, there, there's a guy that wants you to come be on their travel team. And she goes, travel baseball? I go, no, softball. She goes, to my youngest sister, just the craziest out of all of us, I think the most going to be the most physically blessed I think she's actually playing like uh, up in ages she's nine years old but playing with like 12 year olds in baseball with the boys just playing coach pitch so I mean and she's doing real good I was I was really proud of her the main things he's taught her as well as his other um, siblings is is work ethic just have a a, a, a sick ridiculous work ethic. One of the things Anthony says is embrace the process, fall in love with the process. If you do that, the results will come. So he's not a results driven guy, he's a process driven kid and that's the mindset he's passed on to them. And they've been able to see just the tireless work ethic he's put into um, his sport and his craft. To know that I'm Native American is, a, I, I think it's pretty special to me. Cause I mean, I know there's not a lot of Native Americans doing what I'm doing right now. My grandparents are always bragging on me to other people. And so, I mean, that makes me real proud. Cause I know like, they know how big of like an opportunity I've got to get to the, hopefully get to the big leagues. And uh, I, know, I know I'm going to Florida, but I mean, whatever I do at the next level, they're very proud of me. And he's a yes sir, no sir, young man opens doors for his mom, tells me he loves me. Even when he's leaving my room and there's a bunch of teenagers in the room, he'll say, I love you, Dad. We had an in-home with the team and, and, and they said, what's the, the greatest thing that has happened to you you've been told? He said, well, my dad looked me in the eye and said, you're my son first, I'm not a baseball player, you're my son first. So it's that type of relationship, that type of thing that means the most to me. I know I don't tell him enough, but I try to tell him as often as I can. I'm, I don't think I'd be here without him. I don't know how to put it, but I'm just thankful how he's raised us because I know I would not be the player and the person I am today without him.
So this is weird. Basketball season just ended, CJ. Is it that? just ended. 20 wins. What position do you play? Point guard. Why? Point guard, I like to be a floor general, you know, take lead on the team and get some shots up. So you get some shots up, you guys were knocked out. I, I gotta know how it ended for you. Was it, was it sad, was it frustrating? It was frustrating, uh, overtime loss, uh, but it was a good season with the team. Okay, so a lot of fun. Same thing, floor general. When you play shortstop, you're kind of the floor general on the field. Do you, do you play the position that way? Yes, sir, I do, I do. We'll take that a little deeper. Tell me a little bit more about what you value in playing the position of shortstop. Shortstop, you get a lot of balls. You know, it's an important position. You gotta play and take lead on the team and communicate a lot. So CJ, you realize there's nothing appealing about shooting a feature by the wall, by the parking lot. But I brought you out here in hopes, there's car alarms going off over our shoulder. I brought you out here in hopes that you might tell us, as a 19 grad, one of the top players in Georgia, one of the top shortstops in the country, you might tell us where you're gonna go play college baseball. Yes, sir. Will you, will you tell us? I will. All right, but is it in the bag? It is. All right, this is good stuff. He is playing at, make the announcement. Of Alabama, roll tie. Oh my goodness, congratulations. Thank Coach you. Bohannon, how about this? This reveal right here. So why, why the Crimson Tide? It was a good fit for me, you know, the coaches were amazing, the facilities, and it's three hours away from home, which is good. I like that. And the SEC, what do you know about SEC baseball? Great baseball, great competition, and opportunity to get better. And work in the classroom. Coach Bohannon right. needs to know, right now, what kind of course load are you taking? What kind of grades are you making? Tell me about your work in the classroom. A's and B's, uh, course load. What classes are you taking? What's your hardest one? Hardest class, probably pre-calc. Pre-calc, what are you making? Uh, I have a 90 in there, I think. A 90, who's your, who's your instructor? Uh, Mr. O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor, Mr. O'Connor now, he's got a 90. He's hanging in there, he's working hard, he's gotta take good grades to Alabama. Make sure you take care of him. This is exciting stuff, congratulations to you. Introduce me to your mom and dad because this is a big day for them. Tell me about your mom and dad and, and how much they mean to you. They mean everything to me, you know, growing up, I've always looked up to them. My mom's name is Ruth. Yes. And my dad's name is Chris Abrams. And your dad is passionate about you. I've about seen that. him cheering and supporting you. Tell us a little bit about your dad's past and what you've learned from him. My dad's taught me everything, you know, from baseball to everything off the field as well. Um, we've done a lot in the garage with baseball and everything. Just look up to him. And this being a great high school tournament, going against high school teams. You're a great travel ball player too, but this BT, Blessed Trinity, what does that mean to you? What does your school stand for? Take me into a day in the life at Blessed Trinity. Blessed Trinity, great academics, great baseball. Uh, the team is really close. You know, we're brothers out here, and um, we got each other's back on the field. The Alabama Crimson Tide. Yes, sir. This is great. Congratulations. Thanks for letting us tell the world. Thank you. All right, my friend. You're all right. Baseball is five tools. We know what they are, certainly. How about if I throw a sixth out there? How about empathy? When you walk around this great campus here at Lake Point, you could talk to all of these talented high school players and there's no doubt they will understand the pain that the families have felt down at Stoneman Douglas, the 17 students and faculty members that lost their lives. You bet they understand each and every day walking their high school classes. But it really hits home with one team competing in this tournament. North Broward Prep has a couple of players on their team that actually live in Parkland. One player that transferred from Stoneman Douglas. And over the last couple of weeks, we've been blessed to talk to head coach at Stoneman Douglas, Todd Fitzgerald, and their starting shortstop, John Rodriguez, on how baseball is helping all in the community move on. And you can bet your, your bottom dollar that the folks at North Broward Prep, the athletes especially, they understand how they can help. Let's go to their dugout and let's find out. I was, I was scared, honestly, I, I was scared. I, I mean, I, obviously I went to Douglas. I, I know a lot of people at that school. I know the buildings, I knew everything that was happening. And I, I was just thinking like, uh, what am I supposed to do? The, the first thing that hit me was to know that the matter of fact that they're less than 10 miles away from us is insane. And then the matter of fact that it's like, you can only imagine what those parents were going through to know that you send your kids to school and then 
17 of them don't come back home, you'll never see them again. Oh, well, so far we've, uh, when they couldn't go back on the campus because it was still a crime scene, uh, they were using our field to practice and, you know, just welcome open arms. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back to school and uh, getting some routine going and, and really being there for those kids who need it the most. And again, I don't care if it's one kid or 3,000 kids like our principal said last night nationwide. We'll, we'll be there to hug them, love them, whatever they need. And uh, we'll get through this together. And that's uh, that's our responsibility as educators. It's gonna be, I know I know there's going to be a lot of media out there, all that, but I know we just got to keep our heads in the game, play as hard as we can, play for one another, basically. And just just pay attention and realize that baseball is just a game. I mean, life life is more important. There's other things to life than baseball. Just make sure we play hard and play for the school, play for the 17, the 17 victims that passed away, play in, the, in their names, and do the best we can. The entire country is grieving with you. On the back of our helmets, I don't know if you saw, but it has Eagle Pride, and it says MSD Strong in the back, the hashtag, so. I mean, I think all the little things, anything we could do. So we're the closest school to them. So whatever we could do to help, I think we'll do for sure. I think it's just a good time for the kids to get together and to get away from uh, all that's happened. And, uh, you know, for two, three hours, then get out there and uh, just kind of be who they are. You know, if somebody says like a heavyweight fight, you know, you, we took a punch, but uh, we didn't get knocked out. We're going to get back up and, uh, we're not going to let one single individual define who our community is. We're going to we're going to be back, and we'll be back stronger than ever. A little bit more serious, right? But what a great thing that the the good players and the families of North Broward are doing. That's excellent. This young man's excellent. Bryson Lucas coming in from College Station, Texas. His team, the Cougars. You guys are the furthest journey of all the teams here. Uh, why did you guys choose to come here, if you could speak on behalf of your squad? And has it been worth it? Uh, I definitely think it's been worth it. We came because of the competition. Uh, Coach Holder wanted us to come and experience what it would be like to play people of like higher standards, I guess. And, uh, you know, it's just been a really great experience. We lost the first game, but we came out strong the rest of the days, and it's just been, it's been great. So you're one of the highest-ranked left-handed pitchers in the 19 class in the state of Texas. You're about to go through that prospect summer. What do you anticipate? Are you nervous, excited? There are showcases. There's possibilities of making larger teams, like all-American teams. Are you excited? I'm definitely excited. Uh, it's going to be a long road and everything, but I'm ready. Uh, Suho, who are you as a pitcher as we get to know you? Quick scouting report, real short. Uh, I guess I try to rely on my fastball okay. a lot because uh, right now my off speed, I'm on and off with my accuracy, but uh, I just I like to spot up my fastball. It's my best pitch. Your dad served in the United States Marine Corps. Ray, we, we thank him for his service. <laughs> yes. Did mom want you to shave that beard? What do we got she, with that beard? She definitely wanted a little me to, gap right there. She wanted me to shave it. Uh, our, our team's supposed to be clean shaven, and I just <laughs> forgot. That's all right. Yeah. You forgot. So this summer, busy for you. Have you heard of Will Banfield? Yes, I have. He's about to go through the very same thing and wrap it up that you're about to go through. So let's learn what his last year was like right now. After high school season, um, we had a long summer, uh, which I was grateful for. Uh, we had a lot of events, and I played with Team Elite Baseball, uh, and we did really well. Actually, we had a really stacked team. We had a lot of good pitchers, a lot of good position players. We all kind of like played throughout the summer. We all knew each other from before. I uh, attended the National Showcase, uh, me and a couple of my buds like Ethan Hankins and Kumar Rocker. And after the National Showcase, um, we played at the PGA All-American game, uh, all three of us again, again as well. Um, so it just, it's really just a blessing and unbelievable to be able to play with like the kids that you play with uh, for like half of your life, I guess, in the summer. And playing with uh, some of your best buds and going up through the circuit, I guess, with them as well. So we got to strap on the uh, All-American gear and had a great time in San Diego. We, we were very blessed and fortunate for that. I'm really trying to uh, just like go through my season and just see how I do and everything like that. I want to play to the best of my abilities and God's going to take me where, uh, where he has me going and he has a plan for me, so I'm just going to roll with it. 
The center fielder for the Tri-State Arsenal here in Jupiter is a young man by the name of Michael Trout. Michael is from Millville, New Jersey, 2009 class, and one of the top power, or speed, and defensive players in this class. Uh, 6 5, 6 4 runner, despite being 6 2, 190 pounds. This is somebody you could see at strong safety on a football field, but nonetheless, one of the fastest players in the class, one of the top defensive outfielders in the 2009 class as well. Big key with Michael is going to be his bat. He has shown flashes of having excellent bat speed and hitting ability in the past. Not really consistent yet, but if he gets that bat up to where the speed and defense ability is, he could be a top three round pick in the 2009 draft. That's Michael Trout with the Tri-State Arsenal. Yeah, high school is great. Um, obviously, I met my wife there, but uh, you know, just coming, it's just, you know, it's a small school, uh, you know, big school to some people, but uh, you know, it's a small town and you know, uh, the teachers are great. Obviously, colleges were, you know, sending the letters, but, um, you know, when, when scouts were coming to the baseball game, I just told myself this could be reality, you know, come June, and, um, you know, I had to pinch myself a little bit, because you, you try to, you know, as a kid growing up, you want to become a Major League Baseball player, but, um, you know, majority, you know, don't make it, so it's, uh, I just, you know, put, put work in and just told, told myself, uh, and tried to prove a lot of people wrong, and, um, you know, obviously, here now, so. Another power center fielder realizing that his dreams are coming true is right out there, Mr. Parker Meadows of the Grayson Rams. Darren Sutton has more. This past summer, I was kind of struggling with my hands, my hand placement. Um, Pre-pitch, you know, I'd start him up here, uh, but as soon as the pitcher released the ball, I kind of bring him down and my my stride would be kind of violent. So, high velocity pitching, it's gonna to be tough to bring it back up and, and try to hit it, especially on the elevated fastball. I got with some hitting coaches, you know, got with my dad, worked on some high T drills. I like to put the ball probably chest height. So, like, like I was struggling, this past summer, if I, if I brought my hands down and tried to swing, I, I'd get under it and fly out to the top of the cage. But, you know, working with my dad, like I said, we worked on straight to the ball, get on top of it, line drive to the back of the cage. One more. All right. Introduce us to mom and dad. Uh, I'll start with my mom. My mom, she's my rock. Um, she, you know, I've got, I think I get my work ethic from her. She's a elementary school teacher, just learning from her. Coming home after a long night, uh, working on grading papers and all that, she just, she grinds every night. And I think that's definitely where I got my work ethic. Uh, my dad, I think he's just really, you know, made me into the man that I am today. And, uh, you know, I just can't thank them enough. They're honestly just the best, best parents ever. You have a unique teacher in your brother, Austin, because he has played, we were talking about like 1,500 pro plate appearances. I've, I've learned a lot from him, you know. Not many people have the big brother to, you know, get advice from on the baseball field, on and off the baseball field. The main thing I learned from him is just stay positive, you know. He's, he's you know, been up and down with all these injuries he's had, and he's just stayed positive throughout this whole process. And, you know, without him, I think I wouldn't be as positive as I am today after, after a strikeout or after an error in the outfield. Come back in the dugout, keep my head up and that's what I learned from him. All right, that's the, that's the good love, respect, brother thing. Can you take him, though? 
Definitely. All right, that's why I wanted to go with that. What does this mean? What does this stand for? Look, we talk a lot about travel ball. You're with Team Elite, Brad Boris. They're amazing, but this is a high school tournament. What does that mean on the front of your chest? Grayson, this this is this is where hard work, this is where hard work happens. You know, grinding every day after school, three or four hours, and just man, we just grind out there. Coach Dixon helps us out with that. Uh, it's, it, we have fun too. That's what it's all about. Baseball is all about. It's having fun. So there you have it. After 11 grueling innings, we have a championship. Cartersville did an amazing job. The gentleman from Providence turned out to hold on just enough. Blessed Trinity is waiting. Providence out of Jacksonville, Florida. Blessed Trinity with great names like C.J. Abrams, who we've already met, and Steel Chambers, who's one of the best running backs in the country. Right here in the Southeast, he plays baseball as well. That's the Red Championship. In the Blue Championship, Montverde Academy, the incredibly deep team. Nander DeSatis, who could be one of the top five picks in Major League Baseball's amateur draft. And Houston County, an unlikely story. Undefeated throughout this tournament, a perfect 3-0. Just a handful of college commits and not big schools. Just a wonderful, wonderful team. You remember D.L. Hall, perfect game All-American. He's a young man who pitches in the Orioles organization. He is out of Houston County. Let's play two championships. Saul Gonzalez took on the championship game with a vengeance, and he was great. Seven innings pitched, just two runs allowed with ten strikeouts. It was a six-run second inning for Monverde. They had seven hits, they had a three-run Nander DeSatis home run, and it put them in a very strong position to grab hold of the Blue Division title. We can't stop, we need to keep, be aggressive. On base, be aggressive to the ball, hit the ball. We need to get on base, we need to score more runs. We stop you guys, don't, you don't stop by yourself. Hey, let's go, one, two, three, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, we have to put some runs. We have to, you know, we have to, we have to make something happen right now. This is the, this is the time right now. So you know, we got together and we everybody believed in each other and we make something happen. And you know, we got six runs on the board. It was amazing. Meanwhile, Montverde won the coveted 2018 title with joy, and they did it by a score of 6-2. to two. Good. 
big family, that's all it is. Most of these guys have been with each other for three years. They all live in the same house, and it, they can't, it shows on the field. We always play together, play well. The war is um, family. We're together since, since we started this. Since we started this program, since we started this year. The only way we can beat any teams is stay together. Stay together, we're like, acting like a family. We feel like a family, we wanna move forward every single time.